the Bloomington Knights host a special Christmas celebration. Hosted by Commissioner Lenny Lane and special guest Santa. Next on BTW. Welcome to Primetime Wrestling. There you see our commissioner, the esteemed Lenny Lane. I'm Mark Mantell. And I'm Donnie Colfax. And, and what kind of, what, what are you saying, esteemed commissioner? That is greatly well, debated, Mark. Well, quite frankly, he's beloved around these parts especially and has a, a vast career. Uh, he, he's, he's obviously here for some purpose. We're going to see what he has to say. He is dressed to the nines, as they say. And of course, we'd like to remind you to get your tickets for these live events here at the Bloomington Knights online at ptwrestling.com. No smarter decision one could make than to get tickets for the live in-your-face action of primetime wrestling, especially in the holiday season. Well, 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 how's the driving? Are we expecting more people here tonight or what? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Yes! Yes! Listen, myself, and primetime wrestling owners, we've read your emails, we've heard your suggestions, and so we've brought it here for you tonight, primetime wrestling's first ever Christmas special. It is that time of season. I'm in the mood, are you, Donnie? You know, I know money can be tight for the family around this time of year, so I just want to pre I want to give you my appreciation, and the guys in the back, want to give you your appreciation for making this show possible and primetime wrestling as successful as it's been. Thank you. Give yourself some My holiday cheer goes from my sweater all the way to my underoos, Mark. You know that. And with that being said, if you can remember, last month, primetime wrestling gave all the profits and purchased food for a Bloomington food shelf and they raised almost, they were a couple pounds short of 500 pounds. So we want to thank you because that was because of you we were able to donate all that food to people less fortunate. So thank you. Obviously these fans showing their vast so holiday charitable spirit as well. For tonight. We've got a great show pack, action pack show for you tonight. Yes. And what's this now? It's something that breaks up the monotony of the commissioner's ramblings. This impressive young man, from his debut, he caught my eye. And on the tapes I saw before it, There you see him, the well-built Sepio Saunders, better known as Big Sep. I saw him under the learning tree of Body Beautiful despite having to take on Mitch Paradise. Big Sep is a bright young man with an even brighter future. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I worked hard to get this guy. He's an international superstar. He's worked in Japan and Mexico, and now he's right here in primetime wrestling. Let's hear it for Sepio Saunders. A warm reception by this crowd here tonight for Big Sep. Lenny, Lenny, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the opportunity, but, uh, I don't think I'm uh, in the mood to wrestle tonight. Not in the mood to wrestle? Are you, are you sick? Are you not feeling well? What's the deal? Hey, I said, you know, primetime wrestling, we hear everything here. Tell us your concerns. And, um, you know, if you're sick, we can delay this. Maybe you need to go take a tums if you're upset and nervous. I mean, what's up? 
No, it's none of that. It's none of that. I just feel like the fans here don't appreciate wrestling anymore. I don't think the fans here appreciate good athletes anymore. What is he saying? He's talking about this 600 pound gorilla in the room. The competition here is not what it is overseas. Get better here. He brings up valid points. Well, 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 hold up, everybody, hold up, you know. Everybody's allowed their opinion. You know, and, you know we, we hear everybody out here, you know. So, let me use a skill I learned. I always listen to understand and speak to be understood. So what you're telling me is, the competition here in primetime wrestling isn't up to your standards. Not up to my standards, no, not at all. And these people here in prime time wrestling, the fans, don't appreciate wrestling like they do overseas. They don't appreciate good professional wrestling. What do you people think about that? You don't appreciate professional wrestling? It doesn't matter what they think. Sep wants this to become the international premier wrestling okay, federation for fans. Now let me say mine. Last month you came here and had a match with Big Mitch Paradise, one of the top competitors here in primetime wrestling, and you defeated him. You can't handle it. I was victorious. But let me remind you, you had help from a crowd favorite named Doug to help you beat Mitch Paradise. And number two, Maybe if you gave these people something to appreciate, they would appreciate you. Heavy words from the commissioner. Deflections, that's all it is, deflections. Well, you got a guy that looks like me. You got a top tier athlete like Sepio Saunders. They should automatically appreciate me. I mean, look at me. The physique. Big Sep displaying a side of himself that we have not seen until tonight. Confidence? I, I, I was under the impression he had a connection with the crowd here. Boy, he looks good. He's obviously spent time in the gym. So I'll tell you what. We're all in the Christmas spirit here. I'm in the Christmas spirit here. How about this? If you would do this for me. I've got 200 bucks in my pocket. That can go as a bonus. It's Christmas time. Sometimes employers give bonuses, all right? Good companies do anyways. How about this? Tonight, right now in this ring, if you win, you get a $200 bonus in your paycheck. Because right now, I'm sending somebody out here who I know is a crowd favorite because last month, he eliminated a cancer called Aria Davari from this building for good. So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you, Sepio Saunders, your opponent for tonight, Ricky Love. Indeed, a true fan favorite in every sense of the word, Ricky Love, is set now to square off with Big Sep the winner of which will get a $200 Christmas bonus. I want to know where that $200 came from because I had to bring my own water here tonight. And Budget cuts, I guess. You only go for the best. That is expensive uh, bottled water from the Appalachian Mountains. Donnie. I got to keep this voice box as golden as possible. And I got to admit, the fiery spirit of Ricky Love is, is really catching my attention as it's caught these fans' eyes. They may not be wrestling fans, but I guess these people can enjoy the, the camaraderie and the spirit of, of Ricky Love. Indeed, that is one thing we do agree upon, Donnie. Uh, the magnetism and the sheer athleticism of Ricky Love has quite literally drawn the fans to him. We would like to remind you, as many of the fans here at Primetime Wrestling have done already, to make a non-perishable food donation to Veep. Meeting basic needs, building stronger communities. Visit VeepVolunteers.org.
Donnie, I saw you packing up four or five grocery bags full of donations for Veep. You're in quite the Christmas spirit. How could I not be, even though Arya's demise here in PTW, it still is Christmas, and it, I am in the, the holiday spirit. He is Sabio Sama. There you see Big Sap and the fans, quite frankly, don't know what to make after hearing the words of Big Sap. Weighing in at 217 pounds from Fort Madison, Iowa. is just tired of the disrespect. He wants more for PTW. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing, Mark. We will have this incredible matchup when we return on PTW. For staying with us through the break, fans. We are set for incredible action. Our first bout of the evening, Ricky Love, Big Sep. What are your predictions, Donnie? All I can predict is that this matchup is gonna help Primetime step up to the next level in competition in the world of professional wrestling as a promotion, as an entity. It is now gonna become the international promotion for wrestling with Sep Saunders taking on Ricky Love here, international flavor. Nice to get here in the Bloomington Knights. And a nice start off there. Big Sep is claiming that Ricky Love pulled the hair. I'm not sure uh, really what his logic is on that one, following the initial arm Bulls drag hair. by Ricky Love. You guys see Bulls hair? And Ricky Love now questioning if he, if, if he saw anything like that as well. I don't think I saw anything like that. I'm gonna be bringing up that replay rule at the next committee meeting. I promise you that, Mark, I promise you. Big Sep now with words from PJ Thorne, the official assigned to this contest. What a night it's been already. Big words from Big Sep. You, didn't see, you and the fans didn't seem to like it too much, and, and he's one man who's not in the holiday spirit right now with all the, look at that though, Ricky nice, Love nice, fires back up. It, Indeed so, nice kip up there by Love, and he reversed that arm bar into one of his own. Into a wrist lock there. And now Ricky Love claiming a hair pull. So he's just playing a little mind games. I didn't see anything of the like. It's something you do not do in international wrestling, especially when you're in Japan, is bend the rules or go as far as to break them. That kind of disrespect is not seen as a positive trait. Reverse waist lock there into a side headlock by Love. I would uh, estimate that Love is maybe the quicker of the two individuals. And I can assure you that the more honest and, and the one that you might want to bring home to your mom and your family for a Christmas dinner well, is Big Step. Now, you wouldn't want to bring Ricky Love what, home to your parents. What the you... heck does that have to do with this wrestling match right here, Donnie? I'm talking about the honesty and respect of Big Step. That's all the integrity of the man. And you're, you're rambling about... I, I as yet have seen nothing wrong with the integrity as it is as it pertains to Ricky Love. Obviously, as you cheer on Commissioner Lenny Lane as he's 
setting all these things up all the time. You don't need that. You would rather have anything but that. Look now here, the power on display by Big Sep as he just scooped up Love and slams him down. One, two, no. And nice that, coverage though by Big Sep. Indeed so, and Big Sep is aware of what's going on there at all times. And the, I, I dare say, KG Love almost was able to reverse that attempt. And Big Sep Whoa. just powered through it. And he is now He's in, in firm control. Firm Six. control, well said indeed. Those clubbing blows earlier, I mean, right on the back, the leverage, the length of his arms, just so much. Sends Love into the turnbuckle hard, he just he just fell right down to that canvas. The same thing's in effect there. He's got those that amazing reach to his big sap. But Love with a boot to the midsection now, trying to muster up some sort of offense. A couple of shots to the head. But Sep stopped that attempt dead in its tracks with a knee right to the midsection of Love. And look at Love, he is winded. Looks like he got it right under the rib cage just to knock out the elbow to the back of the head. And the crowd has fallen quite, quite honestly into a dull hush here. I think they may be concerned for the well-being of Love at this point. He took a hard shot. Looks a little dazed, he is not. And that's DJ Thorne, maybe she makes some separation between these two. Get a look at, get a look at Ricky Love. This might not be Ricky's time. Big Sep might be too much competition. Big Sep, indeed, a systematic wrestler. It seems like he's thinking three or four moves ahead at all times. He is a journeyman. He has done his, he has done his homework. And not only that, he has went up against the top international competitors. He has seen it all. Big Sep, indeed, an international superstar by every stretch of the word. And and these fans are showing him a quiet awe and respect, something that he's used to from the Japanese crowds who are, are known worldwide for their awe and reverence of the sport. We're almost getting Big Sep commanding that from his audience. You know what, maybe these fans are in the holiday spirit and they're gonna give gifts themselves to these wrestlers, including Big Sep, someone they might not personally agree with and do show him the respect he deserves by letting him by letting him compete in an atmosphere he's comfortable with. The crowd now solidly getting behind Ricky Love, one of their favorites, as Love is able to kick. Oh, he took Watch that momentum for a brief moment. Benedict Arnold. Knee to the back. And that's going to drive the win just as much as a shot to the front midsection will do, Donnie. Those continued knees to the back will make it hard to get any kind of length to a breath that you take, which will just drain your energy in a moment's notice. Look at the strength of those hands. He's got that locked right under the chin. The chin lock cinched in now hard by, by Big Sep Sepio Saunders. These people are trying to get Ricky Love back to his feet, cheering him on, and it's... It's successful again. We'll see how for long. Oh, and a clothesline just turned him inside out, outside in, every direction. One, two, and... Donnie, did you see the force with which that clothesline was delivered? I saw the, not only the force, but the intent and the look of, of, of Big Step as it was about to happen. He had malice in his heart and intent in his eyes. It was wonderful to see those boots continue it. They are Big Step now systematically dismantling the each, each section of Ricky Love's anatomy and he has a clear directive and a clear plan, it would seem to me. See, unlike you, I can admit my faults and when I'm wrong, and I, I'm feeling that in that matchup we saw of Arya Davari and Ricky Love. Oh, and look at that. I think Ricky just got a fluke win over Arya Davari. I think, I think Arya was so overtaken by the fact that he could one, run. two. And the absolute guts and sheer will being exhibited by Ricky Love is nothing short of amazing. A lesser man by this point would have been clear out of this one, I do think. Still got a little fire, but we'll see. He has not mounted much of an offense as of yet, but if you know anything about Ricky Love, you know that he likes the longer matches and seems to get that extra boost near as, as the match progresses. He seems to develop a second wind as sorts. We and might be seeing that right now. seeing a lot from Ricky, like a phoenix from the ashes. He does rise. And look at that flying elbow by Love. There's the boost we were just speaking of. Another one takes down Big Sep. Ricky Love, the fiery one, oh, might Big be Sepp on fire. Under, though. Over. Drop kick by Love. A beautifully placed drop kick. One, two. No, no, Big Step kicks out, Big Step kicks out. Two count only, but momentum, I would suggest, is now on the side of Ricky Love. It looked like a moment of hesitation by Big Step as he was deciding what to do that, that allowed Ricky to capitalize with that, that textbook drop kick. Love back to his feet now, pulling up Saunders. 
DDT. Tony, that was the torque. This is done. One, two, and three. No, the DDT is not enough to put away Love, who still has a little bit of gas left in that tank. And I'm not sure that Big Sep knows what to do next. A fraction, if anything. I, I would put that as a three count. I question PJ's. PJ's officiating and count on that one, a little slow. He charges in and a big splash. And the big frame of Big Sep came crashing down on, on Ricky Love and he's gonna go for another one. And he hits it. Donnie, it's only a matter of time at this he's point. He's going for that bulldog, that bulldog, oh yeah! That running bulldog. Sepio Saunders He's gonna go for the cover, one, two, three. I was absolutely certain that running bulldog was gonna do in Ricky Love. But he is now, oh my goodness. This, the Tangerine Dream must be in Dreamland. He is just on instincts now. I mean, he is indeed. You can see it. The force of those Irish whips into the corner and then. Oh, and the big boot. Look at that kick. We're done now. There's no way. That's There's gotta no be way. one, two, three. Love what? somehow able to get the, I, the left hand around that rope. It looked to me like PJ Thorne put that there oh, for him. Give. A little sympathy for the long hair. I'm not sure what you were dreaming up when you just said that. That I certainly did not see anything of the dreaming. sort. Love, clutching those ropes, trying to get back to his feet. The only one dreaming, Mark, is you, that Ricky Love is gonna somehow pull one out Small of this. Small package attempt. No, he rolls through. That was a There's the bell. This match is over. That's just enough. Who pinned who? Ricky Love. Ricky Love has pinned Big Sep. I am forcing it on the top of the agenda. First thing in the minutes. We are dealing with this replay rule. Big Seth questioning the decision now. It, it, I got to be honest, Donnie. It looked to me, I, I'm not exactly sure whose shoulders were on the mat. I assume that PJ Thorne had a better look at it than either you or myself. It's, it's a conspiracy. We're not going to get it. I, I, I'm being told we're not going to get it. Nonetheless, Ricky Love has, has won this match, and these fans couldn't be happier especially following the speech that Big Sep gave prior to the matchup, saying that the fans did not respect him or the sport. Something fishy. A professional wrestling fit. I don't think anything fishy has happened. I think Ricky Love. And there you see Big Sep extending the hand. Is Ricky Love gonna shake the hand of Big Sep? One Donnie, fluke. Johnny, you're shocked. Two flukes in a row, there's, there's a... Incredible sign of sportsmanship there by Ricky Love. There are forces at play at PTW behind that curtain. Things. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. That's there. I'm promising you, you, you do, and everyone. You do that. This was an incredible athletic contest, and this is why fans all around the Midwest come flocking to the Bloomington Knights for action such as this. Ricky Love's your winner. Commissioner Lane has promised a special Christmas surprise next on PTW. Laszlo, you're late. We're never gonna make it to the show on time. Don't worry about it, we got plenty of time. Just gotta get a quick oil change at Freeway Ford and we'll be on our way to the matches. We don't have that kind of time. They can do it, quick and easy. Phil, good to see you, man. Hey, we need an oil change, we need it right now. Can you help us out? Don't worry, I'll get you right in. Fantastic. Told you so. Bring your car to the Freeway Ford Quick Lube. For only $29.95, we will perform a checkup that includes oil and filter change, tire check, brake check, and topping off your fluids. Mention the Primetime Wrestling Aria Davari Special, and with your oil change, receive a free tire rotation. See, I told you they were fast. One, two, three. <laughs> you were right. Hey, hmm. now we got time for you to shave my back. We sure do. We sure do.
Photography presents the shot of the night. There you see Charlie and the Fantastic Four impressing and entertaining the crowd here at the Bloomington Night. Yes, just one of the amazing attractions you'll see during the breaks if you attend a live taping of Primetime Wrestling. So get yourselves down to the Bloomington Night and be inspired by these youngsters who are inspired by, by folks like Billy Blaze and Mitch Paradise of Body Beautiful to chase their dreams. And what dreams and th these are, what dreams coming true for all these youngsters here. They're gonna be able to have memories of this for a long, long time. Their night at primetime wrestling in the middle of a real pro wrestling ring. Look at those talents, the karate skills of she. I wouldn't want to go up against her in a dark alley or a wrestling ring. I'll admit it. Expertly trained youngsters here exhibiting and showing off their talents and their karate techniques, much to the delight of this hometown crowd. Charlie and the Fantastic Four, what a display. The shot of the night is brought to you by Old Abbott Photography. Trust the award-winning storytellers at Old Abbott. Visit oldabbott.com. Donnie, what a night it's already been. We are set for more action here. And in the spirit of the holiday season, Christmas, I'd like to bring down to you, please welcome to the ring, Brian the Elf, and the big man himself. The big man himself? Could he be referring to who I think he's referring to? I think to? he's talking about our, our commissioner, is he not? Well, Christmas would not be complete without an elf, and there is Primetime Wrestling's own elf, Brian the Elf. He is making his appearance here. Making his way all the way from the North Pole down to the Bloomington Knights here in lovely Minnesota. Brian the Elf looks a bit ornery tonight. I'm not sure what that might be all about. Uh, let's get a look on that man. Yeah, he's got a he's got a grimace on his face. Not too happy to be here tonight. Primetime Wrestling Tonight is brought to you by Budweiser, who'd like to remind you, responsibility matters. And Freeway Ford Bloomington, your way at Freeway. Visit freewayford.net. And Fat Lorenzo's Pizza Pasta Hoagies, Italian in a big way. Ryan Elf making his way into the ring, accompanying Laszlo, soaking up the atmosphere here at the Bloomington Knights. Some fans might think this is Rennie D in the ring, but no, this is Brian the Elf. Well, what's that supposed to mean? So here I am. Yeah. <laughs> I got for about up to years, I've been working for this big, fat Santa Claus. This is, that's how I feel working for Lenny Lane as our commissioner. But you know what Santa does out of pretty much 11 months out of the 12 months of the year? Sits on that chair watching baby Huey on TV while Mrs. Claus is serving him while us elves does all the work for the last 11 months. We do not get any credit. Why can't I grow up to be Santa? Everyone's got a dream. I'm talking. You work for Santa sometime. You will hate it. All it's a slave free work. And one of these days, I want to grow up to be like Santa. Ryan the Elf with some kind of grudge towards Santa Claus. And you know how he pays me? Not enough, he always short changed me. Okay, okay, okay. We don't want any Grinches here at the Primetime Wrestling Christmas Show, do we? In fact, we want Santa Claus and the Elf to hand out free primetime wrestling gear here tonight during Christmas, right? There you go, that's a Christmas spirit idea for you. Now Brian, Brian. What? I understand you're upset. You suck. I understand the roles that you're always stereotyped in. Everybody here can 
empathize with you. Well, not that we're all little people, but we can empathize what it would be like to be a little person. So here's the way I see it. You've made quite a good living from being a little person, haven't you? Can you agree or disagree? I agree on that, but I had to work my butt off because when you walk a mile, it's two miles to me. So it's extra work for us. Okay. Well said. Well said. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause. He made a good point. Finally, I'm finally getting up in the world. Polite round of applause now for Brian. The okay. Well, here's the way I see it, Brian. Christmas is almost up. That means your elf gigs are almost up. Valentine's Day is almost over two months away, so your cherub gifts don't start till then. And as far as I know, The Wizard of Oz isn't being remade anytime soon. Oh, zinger there from Commissioner Lane. He thinks he's a stand-up comedian. So what I'm gonna do to give you a chance to continue to make a paycheck is I'm gonna put you in a match. Does everybody want to see Brian the Elf in a match? And I'll tell you what, Grinch Brian, if you win, there will be no Christmas here at prime time tonight. Anything's better than working for Santa Claus, trust me. Okay, if you win, we will not celebrate Christmas here tonight. You will not have to work for Santa Claus anymore because the winner of this match will get a prime time wrestling contract for one year guaranteed. That is a much sought after prize. I forgot to tell you who your opponent is. It's Santa Claus. What? Santa Claus. How, how about that? Well, what does this mean if Santa Claus joins primetime wrestling? What does that mean for... The, it looks like it's him indeed. There is Santa Claus! Direct from the North Pole. He is the most jolly Saint Nick I've ever seen. You can see it through that, that beard and mustache. He is smiling. Yes, Beaming indeed. with holiday spirit. Look at those boys and girls embrace. Much to the chagrin of Brian the Elf, his employer, Santa, of course, uh, jolly in every sense of the word, but I, I can't put my finger on it, but there, he doesn't seem quite as jovial as usual. I don't know. He looks, look at these people. They love him, Mark. Why can't you do the same thing? Get in the spirit. Hey, that's Santa he Claus personified. That is Satan it. himself. Seems, indeed, maybe over the last few months, uh, getting ready for the big holiday, he's been hitting the treadmill. Santa looks to be pretty in pretty good shape. Can't blame St. Nick for wanting to be in the best shape possible for, for Mrs. Claus and for, for all the kids here at the Bloomington Knights and across the world. Bad Boy Brian makes his way to the outside as Santa Claus now. Even Spreading Laszlo's in the cheer. spirit. Get it, Mark? Laszlo is in the spirit. However, Brian the Elf is not. He will be squaring off against Santa Claus here. And this crowd is shocked. Ladies and gentlemen, this match scheduled for one ball and a one-year contract for primetime wrestling, guaranteed to the winner. On the floor right now, weighing in at 120 pounds, he is the Elf Bad Boy Brian! And his opponent, from the North Pole, weighing in at Holly Jolly in a bowl full of jelly, here he is! Santa Claus! They don't get much more jollier than that, Mark. The referee of PJ is your attendance. Incredible. This might be the greatest oh, yeah. matchup in PGW history. Father Christmas against Brian the Elf. Here in PGW, this is indeed a Christmas spectacular. This is more than special. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event. Santa Claus could join PGW. Polite handshake now from referee P.J. Thorne, and he's going to check the boots as is customary. Yes, even Santa Claus is not beyond the law here at PTW. Santa Claus now getting some cheers behind him, and who, quite frankly, who wouldn't cheer? St. Nick. Brian the Elf, who has, he knows what it's like to have a, 
to have someone over them, a, a slave driver, someone who puts you into the ground practically. And that's exactly what, that's exactly what Lenny Lane does to, to, to me every time I'm on here. And I can, I can really understand the sentiment of Brian the Elf here. And I hope he's, he's successful in his attempt to get a one-year contract here at PTW and get away from the workshop of Santa. Is he? Oh, a little Sa late. Santa's going for the handshake. Oh, there. There you go. Sign of disrespect by Brian the Elf, of course. The shorter of the two individuals, I, I would say that Santa Claus has the height advantage. And the weight advantage here on Brian the Elf. He is Jolly oh. Saint Nick. Although Brian the Elf is a crafty individual, don't put his smaller than usual size behind him. He, he knows how to use the size that he does have in that squared circle. You, you were blathering, Mark. Did you not hear the words of wisdom from Brian the Elf? The bigger you are, the harder you fall. There you have it. That will be the strategy hopefully employed here by Brian the Elf, Santa Claus. Oh, and look at that now. As Kringle just holds him back with that palm and shoves him down to the canvas. You won't do that to me, says Santa Claus. And Brian, the elf, is going to have to rethink things. I think the look on bad boy Brian's face, why did you do that to me, St. Nick? Disrespectful. And it looks like Santa Claus is firmly planted in his position. Is he going to go for the test of strength, the Greco-Roman knuckle lock here, Donnie? This would probably be an advantage for, for Brian the Elf, considering he works with his hands all the time. And St. Nick is apparently sitting there with Mrs. Claus watching daytime soaps. He's going to have to jump if he wants to get that high or get a ladder. However, this is not a ladder match. And now Santa Claus gets down to a knee to make things a bit more fair in the test of strength game. Oh! And Brian now with the leverage advantage. St. Nick is, he's bowing to Brian. The but back to his feet now. Yes! Back to his knees now. That boy Brian's got him, stepped on those hands. He did step on the hands and I didn't think I'd say it, Donnie, but this is already a seesaw matchup here. I had, I had faith Brian, in Brian the Elf. Brian the Elf goes to work on the midsection of Kringle, and he drives that foot right into the neck. He won't be ho-ho-hoing much after that. My parents always taught me, those who don't feel the holiday spirit is the one you gotta give it to the most. And Brian the Elf might not be the happiest man right now, but he's got the biggest opportunity of anyone here in the Bloomington Knights a one-year contract and here at PTW. How in the world would Santa Claus, if he lost to Brian the Elf, be able to show his face around the North Pole? What? Oh! Brian the Elf, insult to injury. There you go, Santa. Dramatic contest here, fans. We'll be back with the rest of this matchup. Mr. Rice? Big show, big appetite. The regular pre-show for Lorenzo's meatball hoagie? That's right. Have the cook throw an extra meatball on there for me. I have a big match tonight. Hoagie for you, Mr. Blaze? Does it look like this body eats hoagies? Can I get your salad? Biggest salad you got. I'm Cody Rice, and you may know me as the Husky Heartthrob from Primetime Wrestling. Before every show, I have a little appetite, so I head to the Bloomington Fat Lorenzo's for a meatball hoagie.
Welcome back, fans, to Primetime Wrestling. This is a live event, and of course, certain unexpected things can happen. This match actually would conclude during the break. You saw it right there, and, and Santa Claus would reveal himself. And, and look at that, it is Aria Davari. had masqueraded as Santa Claus. Ho, 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 bitch! Oh, that's, that's uncalled for. I gotta give it to you. You duped me, you duped all these people here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to announce Sheik Arya Davari is back in prime time wrestling. It is official, and I'm amazed. Christmas has come early. Arya Davari guaranteed a one-year primetime wrestling contract. Yes, indeed, you and uh, the dark. some of the fans are in great spirits because of that, I will admit. But there you see, champion of the people, the Black Stallion. Couldn't they just give me one moment to enjoy the sunshine for once on this Christmas celebration? The dark cloud of, of Arya Davari. Cody Rice. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere from behind the Husky heartthrob. To be just blatantly assaulted the Black Stallion as he was on his way out here. To be fair, Black Stallion wasn't scheduled. He wasn't on my notes, so he wasn't. Perhaps he was out here to discuss charitable givings and whatnot, things of that nature. We're not sure. Maybe that's what Cody Rice wants to do. Well, that's. He's got. He's yeah, he's he's asking microphone. for the microphone now, it's Cody Rice. He's got the power now. Shut up! Shut up! The last few months, I've had a stellar win loss record. Oh! Here at Primetime Wrestling. Laser kicking. And another. Right here, your hero, your former champion, the Black Stallion. I beat him one, two, three a couple months ago. Oh, but see, that right there. Stallion tries, tries to come back, tries to take, but. I'm not even on the poster. My name's not even on the poster. Cody Rice is incensed. Doing exactly what he did in their matchup before. He is dominating the Stallion. I need no respect around here. I am the best looking man in primetime wrestling. A lot of the ladies feeling that sentiment. You can hear them. Rice now removing his shirt, continuing to go to work on the back of the Black Stallion. And tonight, I'm here to take what I deserve. And I don't know quite why this is being allowed here. He is taking his destiny into his own hands. Cody Rice is on a rampage. Mark, with their smoke, there's fire. That is two competitors tonight who cut to, they've complained about the disrespect they're oh, getting. Man. Look at Rice, he's he's running. He is strutting about the ring. Who does he think he is? Under the leadership of Commissioner Lane. Talk about that, Mark. Of course not. We, we should get someone out here to stop Cody Rice or to get some control of this situation. Commissioner Lane would be just the person to do it. I wouldn't mind seeing him one bit now, maybe to put a stop to this. It's entering the ring now, though. It, it, He's this got is, an official. And look at the Luthes press. Out of nowhere comes back the Black Stallion, and that's going to stop Cody Rice and his momentum. Cody Rice is going to head to the back, it looks like. Maybe he had enough of the Black Stallion. Maybe that's going to curb his, his, his will to get at the Black Stallion here. He's won the matchup, at least in the hearts and minds of these people. There was no matchup. This was just a mugging, an outright assault. I was speaking of a theoretical matchup, Mark. First of all, nobody in this building believes you weigh 198 pounds. I happen to fully believe that. Looks like I got my wish. Commissioner Lane is out here to take Second control of this of all, situation. If the people of primetime wrestling want to chant dead weight or rice a roni, I'll allow it. He's, come on, Mark, and you just sit there smiling as usual when Lenny's out here. Clear bias towards the Husky heartthrob. Efficient leadership techniques on display by Lenny Lane. Third of all, the most important, you're ruining primetime wrestling's first ever Christmas show. I think that might be Lane who's ruining it. And with that being said, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I know you want to see Black Stallion wrestle tonight. Would you like to see Black Stallion take on Cody Rice? We've already seen it. The crowd would love to see that rematch. No one wants to see me just did it right now. How about this? Would you people want to see Black Stallion take on Cody Rice right now? I know I would. Is this a two out of three falls matchup? Honey, I am not wanting to wrestle right now. I have to get in the back. I have a whole pre-match ritual. I have a protein shake to drink and push-ups. I have a shake with you and a pump on. I'm not ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, would you like to give Cody Rice some time for to do jumping jacks, push-ups, car wheels? Rice exiting the ringside area. To drink a protein shake? Or would you like to see him get in this ring right now? These people just want to see the Husky heart drop injured. Cody Rice, you can get in that ring right now by yourself, or I can have my security escort you in the ring right now. What kind of regime is this? Cody Rice has been assigned a contest against the Black Stallion. Yo, how about this? Since I don't have security right now, how about I come down there and throw you up on the ring right now? Lenny Lane taking matters into his own hands. Personally threatening talent. Fines and suspensions is one thing, but physical altercations between officials and competitors? It's unprecedented here at PTW. Lenny Lane doing what needs to be done to get this matchup underway. He is a hands-on commissioner. Look, now they come out of the woodwork. His cronies. There you see primetime security. And the Black Stallion has just, he has brought Cody Rice in the hard way. Hip tosses him over the top rope. This is unnecessary. This is unbelievable is what it is. And a series of it well executed arm drags there has Cody Rice planted in the center of the ring. And I do believe this matchup is underway. We heard the bell, but Cody Rice is not even, what are you not even fully ready to be in the ring. He's, he didn't take off his shorts yet. Look at him. Rice did not have a chance to do his so-called pre-match ritual. So-called, Mark. If he doesn't do those, you know what could happen. He could easily injure himself in that ring. You got by not By not completely enveloping himself in baby oil? Mark, you need to stretch before you enter the ring. And Cody Rice is going out there. He said cold. He's not prepared for this. But Cole. the Black Stallion came out here hot. Hard shot by the Black Stallion takes down Rice. It's the only reason he's dominating this matchup. And the Black Stallion has removed the athletic shorts of Cody Rice down to his ring gear. And a hard knee right to the abdomen of the Black Stallion has turned the tide, at least temporarily so. Cody Rice now in control, Donnie. Temporarily, the Stallion was only in control for a few moments. Cody Rice has been dominating the Stallion before the match, and now the, the impromptu official matchup set in place by Commissioner Lenny Fraud. Hard shots there by Cody Rice. Oh, and a nice elbow to the side of the head. Come on. Let's hear it now, come on. Let's hear it now. Is he gonna do it again, right in the same spot? Oh, to the eye. That is a dirty tactic if I've ever seen one. I didn't see that. I heard. I was listening to those fans chant dead weight to Cody Rice, and our commissioner do nothing about it. Rice stalking the Black Stallion now. The ultimate strategy. Oh, and that is unnecessary. You hear those women though? They love it, and they're smiling. They love the Husky heartthrob. Double axe handle to the small of the back. Or sorry, the upper portion of the back. The small area of the back is what I was going to say. 198 pounds of Husky heartthrob right there on display again. Black Stallion comes from behind, rolls him up. One, no, two count there by the Black Stallion. Don't let Rice's size fool you. He might be a, 
an undersized competitor. One, two, but he knows how to use leverage. He does display it well in that uh, in that clothesline there. That leverage, the strength and leverage. Another double axe handle. And Rice comes down with all of his weight when he comes down with those shots on you. And look now, as he is he is choking out the Black Stallion with the tape. There you see it dangling from the wrist. Donnie, you can see it clearly in front of you there. I, I did see it, Marky. You know, I, I'm going to give it to the Husky Heartthrob, though. He's got a point to prove here in PTW against the likes of the politicking backstabber Black Stallion. Cody Rice, Cody Rice doing a fair deal of gyrating and showboating, as it were. Sends the Stallion into the ropes, picks him up, down with the sidewalk slam. And we have a one, two. Forceful sidewalk slam there, planted the Black Stallion. Cody Rice is aware of, of what separates the goods from the greats, and that's those who are willing to take their destiny into their own hand, to take control of it, to seize that brass ring and run away with it. And that's what, it, that's what Hussey Hearthrob has been doing lately. He's been really stepping up his game. Reverse chin lock now being firmly employed by Rice. The Black Stallion able to make it to his feet. Delivers a couple elbows to the midsection, but Rice clubs him on the back of the head, moves into the corner. He's gonna go for the Irish whip there, into the other opposite turnbuckle. And Rice is gonna come at him, and he's gonna find nobody home as the Black Stallion able to move out of the way. The Black Stallion is lightning quick. Blocks the shot, forearm of his own, and another. The Black Stallion is gonna ascend to the top turnbuckle, and he comes down with the flying shoulder tackle. Taking an advantage of a, of a somewhat dazed Cody Rice. Both men down on the canvas. That may have taken a lot of energy out of the Black Stallion as well. Uh, I thought you were gonna admit the truth and say the beating that Cody Rice has been laying into him is what did it, but sure, I'm sure jumping off the top rope didn't help him at all. Black Stallion, the first back to his feet here. Jimmy the ref officiating this contest. Staying on top of both men here, but now they're both back to their feet. Stallion catches him first with a shot, but Rice caught him second with a shot, a harder shot than the first one by the Stallion. But now the Stallion is duking it out with Rice against the ropes, and an elbow hard down to the canvas, and a clothesline down. And Rice is having it taken to him at this point. Lateral press, one, two. The two count, both men showing aggressiveness in this. This is, this is quickly becoming personal between these two. These two have an intense rivalry here. One of the most well-known rivalries in all of primetime wrestling. Hard elbow there, has the Black Stallion reeling. And he just speared the life out of him. Just a two count though. That's not Don't let do the it. size of the Husky Heartthrob again fool you. Beautifully done spear, even though it's 198 pounds, it's expertly done. It's that extra heart that the Husky Heartthrob has. And he catches him with the dreaded stampede kick. That's gonna do it no, if he can no, roll. No, 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 no. Rice, Rice has the sensibilities to be able to roll out of the ring, and that was the only move he had there. This is not the Husky Heartthrob's first dance. The Husky Heartthrob trying to gather his wits, trying to shake the proverbial cobwebs. He Using might have that a, 10 count to make some space. He might have a hard time doing it. I think he's had enough. I think he's gonna hightail it out of here. Hightail it, he's trying to avoid injury marks. Say it like it is. Uh, now, now, Loose sitting up right there, making sure his lower back doesn't swell up. Gonna get some ice on it. That did it. Rice wants nothing more to do with the Black Stallion. And what a... Making the smart move. In some opinions, maybe showing a bit of a yellow streak. Come on back. The only yellow streak I see is... Come on back. There he is. Black Stallion not satisfied at all. I think these people, the good people here in Bloomington, want you to come back down to the ring. Jimmy the ref had no choice but to count out the Husky Harper. Just me and you, come on. Come back down. 
Black Stallion calling out Cody Rice for another confrontation. You have got to be, listen to this, it's serious. You got to be the biggest dummy in the world. You see, you want to come out and make a statement. So of all the people back there, you want to jump on the Black Stallion? That's stupid. See, the people know it here. The people know it here. I'm the baddest man walking the face of this man. Does he want to cripple the Husky Arthrop? Will he be happy then? Hey, you want to get famous? Come down and get famous, Joe. Get him. You want to get go. He's already beat him in official matchup. All right, you know what? You won't come down here, and I'm not chasing you. Stani doesn't chase nobody. So I'm telling you this: next month, Chuck. Next month. You bring your gear, bring your protein shake, bring your shake weight, whatever you need to. You can throw some fat burners in there too, buddy. Next month, hit the gym. Because if you don't come out next month, I'm going to come find you. Somebody put up a brick wall. Stallion thinks he's a comedian too. Black Stallion making it clear to Cody Rice he is not going to take no for an answer. He will come find him himself if he doesn't answer the challenge. Well, th that's what you need to do, Mark. That's what that's... Cody Rice simply put that on display for everyone to see. Fans, next time on Primetime Wrestling, it will be the most anticipated matchup in the history of Primetime Wrestling. It's going to be for the World Heavyweight Championship. Ready D battles John Johnson. It's going to be one for the ages, Mark. When that matchup happens, the roof is going to blow off of this place. I can personally guarantee it. I will verify that for once. What you are saying is indeed the truth and completely factual. We'll be lucky if the Bloomington Knights can withhold all the action. Thanks for being with us, fans. This has been Primetime Wrestling. I'm Mark Mantel. I'm Donnie Colfax. See you next time.